Hello students, welcome back to our channel Diksha Karnataka. So as you know, we have started a series where we are discussing the top 30 questions from all the chapters. So in today's video, I will be dis discussing top 30 questions from the chapter Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure. So this is a low weightage topic for your KSA 2024. You can expect one or one question maybe from this chapter. But there are some important concepts that if you do, you will be definitely able to solve these questions. So let us see those important questions and I'll be telling you what some important tricks how to solve these questions. So first of all, which of the following statement is incorrect? So the statements if you see it is about bond order and bond length. So one first thing that you should remember is bond order is inversely proportional to bond length, right? If bond order is less, right? If bond order is less, for example, we have bond order of 2 and another bond order of 3. Right? So, this if bond order is more here, bond length will be less here. Okay? Bond order is inversely proportional to bond length. That is the first thing. Now, let us see the statements here. How to find bond order? There is a trick I have told in, uh, in my previous videos also. You can remember this one. If 14 is there, bond order will be 3. Then increase 1 and the bond order will decrease by half. Okay? So, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So bond orders are 2.5, 2, 1.5 and 1. And in this side we have 13, 12, 11 and 10. So it is like 2.5, 2, 1.5 2, and 1. Right. Now you see what is this number? These are your number of valence electrons. Now if you see the first option O2. Okay. O2 is 8 plus 8. The atomic number of oxygen is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. So for 16 the bond order is 2. Right. And then for O2, 2 plus. O2, 2 plus means you have to add and you have to remove 2 electrons now. So, 8 plus 8, 16 minus 2 electrons will be 14 electrons. So, for 14 electrons, the bond order is 3, right? Now, if you see the bond length, so I can say the bond length of O2, 2 plus will be less than the bond length of O2, right? Because since the bond order is more, bond length will be less. But the statement given here is, uh, the bond length of O2 is greater than bond length of this is correct statement, right? We have to find the incorrect statement for this question. Okay, now let us see the next one. Uh, we have bond order of O2 plus and bond order of O2 2 minus. Okay, so now if you see here, this statement is also correct. Bond order of O2 plus is greater than bond order of O2 2 minus. You can check here. Uh, O2 2, O2 plus, O2 plus will be how much? So, O2 is 16, 16 means 1 less is 15, so O2 plus is 2.5, okay, and then we have O2, 2 minus, O2, 2 minus is again 16, 17, 18, so that is 1, so bond order of this one is greater than this one, this statement is also correct, okay, then we have bond length of O2 is greater than bond length of O2, 2 minus, okay, let us see this one, bond order, bond, bond length of O2, so what is the bond order of O2, we have already calculated it is 2, and O2, 2 minus, that is 1. So, obviously, bond length of O2 will be less than the bond length of O2, 2 minus. So, this statement is also correct. Now, we have bond order of O2 is greater than bond order of O2, 2 minus. This statement is also correct. So, all the statements given here are correct. So, maybe like some option is mismatched, okay. But this is the trick how to find the bond order, okay. Next question. In the oxygen and carbon molecule, the bonding is. So, we know in oxygen, there is 1 sigma and pi bond. And in carbon, we have this structure, right? So, it has 1 sigma and 2 pi bond. So, the correct answer for this question is option number A. Okay. Next, which of the following is an incorrect statement? Hydrogen bonding is stronger than dispersion force. That is correct. Sigma bonds are stronger than pi bonds. That is also correct. Uh, sigma bond is due to your head-on overlapping, whereas pi bonds are due to the lateral overlapping. Then we have ionic bonding is non-directional, that is also correct. Sigma electrons are referred to as mobile electrons, this is incorrect because pi electrons are mobile electrons, sigma, uh, sigma electrons are your not non-mobile electrons. So the correct answer for this question is option number D. Okay, next, uh, the correct order of boiling point of the following compounds. This is very important. So boiling point of the compounds depends on the intermolecular forces. For these compounds, the intermolecular forces that are present is your hydrogen bonding. Now, hydrogen bonding also depends on the number of hydrogen bonds formed 
and the electronegativity of the element, right? So, that is why based on these two factors, first factor is number of hydrogen bonds, okay? And the second one is electronegativity of the bonds, okay, of the element. So, based on this, the experimental data that we found is water, then greater than HF and then it is NH3, okay? So, the correct answer for this question is option number B. This is a data that is observed. So, please remember this value, okay? This order you have to remember. Next. The formal charge on the central oxygen atom in ozone is, okay. So, if you draw the structure of ozone, okay, we have this structure. Now, if you see here 1, 2, here 2 electrons are donated and we have 2 electrons here. Now, formal charge formula is the total number of valence electron for this one is 6 minus the number of electrons that are uh, non-bonding electrons that is your 2 minus half of bonding electron. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 6. Okay. So, if you solve this, we will get plus 1. So, the correct answer for this question is option number C. Okay. Now, next, the percentage of S character in the hybrid orbitals of nitrogen in NO2 plus, NO3 minus and NO4 plus. So, you can see the options are different. If we have NO2 plus, nitrogen has generally 5 valence electrons. NO2 plus means it has 4 valence electron. So, I can draw like this. Okay, NO2 plus. Now, if you see this, is, it is having two uh, sigma bond. Two sigma bond means hybridization is sp. So, S character is 50 percent here. So, we have only one option with 50 percent. So, that should be the correct answer. Now, let us see the next one. NO3 minus means nitrogen has six electrons. So, we have two here and one lone pair, right? So, if one lone pair is present, what is the like the number here? One, two and three. Hybridization is sp2, right? So, if hybridization is sp2, the uh, percentage of S character, how to find out, how I found out this percentage of S character is 100 divided by 2, that is 50. Here, we have to do 100 divided by 1, 2 and 3, that is 33.33, right. Now, if it is given NO4, NO4 plus, so here this structure is little different and just think like this, okay, it is sp3 hybridized, sp3 hybridized means again it is 25 percent, okay. So, that means 100 divided by 4. So, the correct answer for this question is option number B. Okay, next, bond angle in pH 4 is more than that of pH 3. This is because of, so in pH 4 plus, there is the, if the structure is like this, okay, pH 4 plus, it is tetrahedral 109 degree and here we have pH 3, there is a lone pair present, right. So, what happens? Due to the lone pair, there is a repulsion between the lone pair and bond pair. So, these bonds come together, okay, they, they, there is a repulsion here. So, these bonds come together, that is why the bond, uh, the bond angle decreases in pH 3, okay. So, the correct answer for this question is option number D. Next, which of the following poses a net dipole moment? So, net dipole moment means the dipole moment should not be uh, should not cancel each other. So, if you see SO2 structure, S has 6 valence electrons, two, uh, 4 will be used for uh, making 2 bonds with the oxygen, right? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, we are left with 2 more electrons. So, due to this lone pair, what happens? There is repulsion and the molecule is uh, having bent structure. So, it will have some net dipole moment. Now, if you see BF3, BF3 structure is like this, trigonal planar, Okay. So, here what happens? There is a resultant vector here and a resultant vector here which cancels out each other and the net dipole moment comes out to be 0. Now, if you see BCl2, it is a linear molecule. So, here also it gets cancelled. CO2 is also a linear molecule. Here also it gets cancelled. Okay. So, these all are having mu is equal to 0. So, the correct answer for this question is option number A. Next. Which of the following pairs contain two lone pairs of electrons in the central atom? Okay, so we can see the structures here. First, if you see I3, okay, I3 plus. So that means the central atom I, we have to think that it has six electrons, okay. One plus charge is there. Generally, iodine will have seven electrons in the valence cell. Plus charge is there means it has six electrons. Out of that six, two are used to form bond with other two I, right. So, now you see there are two lone pairs on the central atom. So, this is there. In water, if you see, oxygen has again six valence electrons. Out of that, two is used for forming bonds with water, uh, with hydrogen. So, one, two, then we have three, four and five, six. So, two lone pairs are present in this also. So, the correct answer for this question is option number A. Next, the intra intramolecular hydrogen bond is present in. So, intramolecular is present in your orthonitrophenol. Okay. So, we have this structure. 
ortho nitro phenol okay so there is intramolecular hydrogen bonding in option number b next the state of hybrid orbitals of carbon in co2 ch4 and co3 2 minus respectively are okay so if you know co2 structure it is like this to calculate the hybridization, you should know the number of uh, like sigma bonds and the number of lone pairs. Okay, so if you see here, there are two sigma bonds and zero uh, lone pair. So the z value is equal to two for it is sp hybridization. So we can have only this one option. This is incorrect. This is incorrect. This is also incorrect. But we'll check for others. CH4 in CH4 there are four sigma bonds. So z is equal to four. So the hybridization is sp3. Okay, and then if you see CO3 2 minus, okay, this one is like this. We have 1, 2, and 3 sigma bond. So, C sigma bond means sp2 hybridization. So, the correct answer for this question is option number C. Next, which of the following structures of a molecule is expected to have 3 bond pairs and 1 lone pair of electrons? So, 3 bond pairs and 1 lone pair is your pyramid pyramidal shape. So, we can discuss all the shapes once again. Trigonal planar is like this with 3 bond pairs and 0 lone pair, 3 bond pairs plus 0 lone pairs. In tetrahedral it is 4 bond pairs, octahedral it is 6 bond pairs. In pyramidal it is 3 bond pairs plus 1 lone pair. Okay? So these all things are very general things, very basic things. If you learn the table from Vesper theory, the like chemical bonding is mostly about Vesper theory and molecular orbital theory. So prepare the table. Uh, like all the structures thoroughly that is more than enough for the exam okay next which of the following is the correct electron dot structure of n2o molecule okay so now if you see here n we have n we have and oxygen we have right we know there can be three bonds between two nitrogen atoms and one bond here now if you see the charges oxygen is having more electrons so minus nitrogen is having more elect less electrons so it is plus okay so the correct answer for this question is option number d okay next one arrange the following in the increasing order of their bond order again a very important question there are many questions asked from bond order so again we can use this trick here the four compounds given are o2 o2 plus o2 minus and o2 2 minus right so i have i can write the table once again here if it is 10 it is 1 11 is 1.5 12 is 2 13 is 2.5, 14 is 3, 15 is 2.5, 16 is again 2, 17 is 1.5 and 18 is 1, right. Now if you see O2, O2 has 16 valence electrons, so 16 will have bond order of 2. Now O2 plus 16 minus 1, that is 15. So minus 1 if we do, if we if you have plus charge, you have to add if it is minus charge, right. So 16 minus 1 plus charge is there means you have to subtract 1. So 15 means what is the bond order? We have 2.5. Now O2 minus, minus means 16 plus 1 that is 17, bond order is 1.5. Then O2, 2 minus, O2, 2 minus is 16 plus 2, 18 that is bond order is 1. Now if we arrange them from the increasing order, so first will be O2, 2 minus, right? Then we will have O2 minus, then we will have O2 and sorry O2 and then we have O2 plus right. So this is the order we can see here O2 2 minus O2 so last one is O2 plus so the correct answer for this question is option number D okay. Next HCl is covalent and NaCl is an ionic compound this is because sodium is highly electropositive hydrogen is a non-metal HCl is a gas the electronegativity difference between the H and Cl is less than 2.1 okay. So whenever there is an electronegative difference is more than 2.1, we will get ionic compounds. So if it is less than 2.1, we will get covalent compounds. So the correct answer for this question is option number D. Next, which of the following is non-existent according to the molecular orbital theory? So you can just see what is the formula if the 1 by 2 of bonding electrons minus anti-bonding electrons is equal to 0, then we will get that molecule do not exist. Now if you see He2, what is the electronic configuration of He? 1s2, right? So we have like this He1s, He1s, okay? Here we have two electrons, here we have two electrons. Now if you see their bond molecular orbital, this will be like this, right? So this is sigma 1s, this is sigma star 1s. So you can see this is 
2 minus 2 by 2 that is 0. So, this value comes out to be 0. So, this molecule is non-existent. Okay, correct answer is option number C. Next, O2 molecule is, this is very important. In molecular orbital theory, there is one way of filling the electrons. If it is less than 14 or 14 or less than 14, we have, okay. if it is less than 14, then what we do? The filling of electrons is in this way. The correct order of filling the electrons is sigma 1s, sigma star 1s, sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, sigma 2pz, pi 2px, pi 2py, okay. Then we have pi star 2px, then we have pi star 2py and then sigma 2pz, okay. This is the correct order of filling. Now, if the electrons is greater than 14, greater than 14, then there is a different order followed here. The order followed here is, just there is a change in this one. We have first is sigma 1s, okay. Next is sigma 1s star, next is sigma 2s. This up to this it is correct, sigma star 2s. Here instead of sigma 2p, z first pi 2px and pi 2p y comes. So, we have pi 2px is equal to pi 2py is equal to sigma 2pz and then again we have pi star 2px pi star 2py and then sigma star 2pz right now oxygen if you count it is 8 plus 8 16 electrons so 16 electrons means we have to follow this rule now now if i fill the electrons here we will get 1 2 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay. Then 13, 14 and 15 and 16, right. So, since there is unpaired electrons are present, so O2 is paramagnetic, okay. So, please remember this one, you can, you need not do these things, just have to remember in the exam that O2 molecule is paramagnetic. So, correct answer is option number A. Next. The relationship between the dissociation energy of N2 and N2 plus is, okay, again we can use the same formula for 14, N2 is 14, right, so that means the bond order will be 3, now N2 plus, right, the number of electrons is 13, so bond order is 2.5, so now dissociate, so if bond, so what is the, if bond strength or bond order is directly proportional to bond dissociation energy, okay, this one you have to remember, now if you see, Dissociation of energy and N2 is equal, it will not be equal. Now, dissociation energy of N2 can either be lower or higher. No, there is a rule for that. Now, dissociation energy of N2 is greater than the dissociation energy of N2 plus. This is correct because bond order for N2 is more. So, its dissociation energy will be more. So, the correct statement for this question is option number C. So, let us see now question number 19. According to this, there are three statements given. So, we have to just tell the relation between bond order and bond length, right? So, now first of all, if you see N2 plus and N2, let us see quickly, we have done many times this one. N2 plus N2 is 14, the number of electrons is 14, so bond order is 3 and this is 2.5. So, if the bond order, so what I can say, whose bond length will be more? Bond length of N2 plus is greater than bond length of N2, right? That is what has happened here, bond length in N2 plus is 0 0.02 angstrom greater than, so this statement is correct. Now, if you see NO plus and NO. NO plus and NO. So, 7 plus 8, 15, this is 14 and this is 15. So, here bond order is 3, here the bond order is 2.5. So, bond length if we calculate, bond length of NO will be greater than bond length of NO plus, right. So, that is what is given, bond length in NO plus is 0 0.09 angstrom less than the NO. So, this statement is also correct. Now, if you see O2, 2 minus has a shorter bond length than O2. So, now if you see O2, okay, O2 and O2, 2 minus. So, O2 is your 16. So, 16 means for 14, we have 3. For 15, it is 2.5. For 16, it is 2. For 17, it is 1.5. And for 18, it is 1. So, O2 will be having bond order of 2 and O2, 2 minus will have a bond order of 1. So, that means O2, 2 minus. So, I can say the bond length of O2, 2 minus will be less than the bond length of, bond length of O2, 2 minus will be greater than bond length of O2, right. If the bond order is less, 
bond length will be more right so this statement is incorrect right so the correct answer for this question is option number c next according to molecular orbital theory for o2 plus the bond order is less than o2 so we, you can just see now we have done now for o2 the bond order is 2 and for o2 plus it is 16 17 right o2 plus means 17 o2 plus okay o2 plus is sorry 68 plus 8 16 minus 1 15 so for 15 the bond order is 2.5 so i can write here for o2 plus it is 2.5 right so now bond order is less than o2 no bond order is greater than o2 right so this part is incorrect so bond order is more than o2 and o2 plus is paramagnetic this is also correct paramagnetic so the correct answer for this question is option number b now how it has come paramagnetic if you have seen the electronic configuration the last electronic configuration was pi 2 p x is equal to pi 2 p y star 1 1 electrons were present now if there is a positive charge this one electron will be removed but still we have one unpaired electron so it will be paramagnetic okay so the correct statement for this question is option number b now next when n2 plus is formed from n2 bond order is dash and o2 plus is formed from o2 the bond order is 1 so again we can see so you can see just by knowing this trick how many questions from bond order we can solve it right so for n2 the 14 bond order is 3 n2 plus if you see it is 13 and bond order is 2.5 so when n2 plus is formed the bond order is decreasing right so the bond order first decreases so the bond order will decrease now we can have these two options we can eliminate these two options now if you see from o2 plus is formed from o2 so o2 is 16 and the bond order here is 2 now if you see o2 plus it is 15 and the bond order is 1.5 right just now we have done here o2 plus is we have 16 here so i can write 14 15 and 16 for 14 it is 3 15 it is 2.5 and 16 it is 2 so that is why this is 2.5 so when from o2 to o2 plus is formed the bond order has increased so the here it is increasing right so the correct answer for this question will be option number d now next how many electrons are there in li2 so if you see li2 lithium configuration is hydrogen helium lithium so 1s2 2s1 another lithium is also there 1s2 2s1 so total number of electrons will be 6 so the correct answer for this question will be option number b now what is the dominant intermolecular force or bond that must be overcome in converting ch3oh to a gas molecule you know alcohols are very good in forming hydrogen bonds so in this case there is hydrogen bonding so that it has to be overcome so the correct answer for this question is option number d now if you see the next question the melting point of uh, ortho hydroxy benzaldehyde is lower than that of para para hydroxy benzaldehyde because of so we have these two structures ortho ortho hydroxy benzaldehyde and we have para hydroxy benzaldehyde right so now if you see in case of ortho hydroxy benzaldehyde it is involved in intramolecular hydrogen bonding whereas para hydroxy benzaldehydes are involved in intermolecular hydrogen bonding so that is why here the boiling point is more so ortho hydroxy benzaldehyde has intramolecular hydrogen bonding and para hydroxy benzaldehyde has intermolecular hydrogen bonding so the correct answer for this question is option number d now which one of the following compounds does not follow octet rule so we know co2 is following octet rule we have this structure 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 electrons are there pcl3 if you see we have here also right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 electrons according to octet rule there should be 8 electrons in the valence cell now if you see icl so icl it has 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 clf3 clf3 has 3 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 7 so it has total 1 2 3 4 5 10 bond uh, 10 electrons it doesn't satisfy the octet rule so the correct answer for this question is option number d now which one of the following has the maximum covalent character so covalent for maximum covalent character about the anion if you think it should have more charge okay and the anion size should be bigger okay so first preference should be given to charge and what about the cation about cation it should also have more so this is more negative charge and here it is more positive charge and the size should be smaller 
Now, if you see in all these options, the cation part is same. Here the anion is F minus, here it is O2 minus, here it is N3 minus and here it is Cl minus. So, first of all, charge should be considered since this one is having more charge. So, it will have more covalent character. So, the correct answer for this question is option number C. Now, the number of bonding pairs of electrons in the T-shaped molecule of MX3. So, if you know T-shaped, we have this example of ClF3, it is T-shaped molecule, okay. So, it has three bond pairs and two lone pairs. So, the correct answer for this question is option number B. Okay, now we have next question. The correct order of the bond length in the following question. So, C2H4, we have that is uh, sp2 hybridization, C2H2, okay. Next, we have C6H6 and last is C2H6, okay. So, now if you remember, okay, now if you remember more in this one sp3 character is there, right, more sp3 character or more s character, okay, if the s character is uh, less, sorry, less is the s character, more is the bond length, okay, more is the bond length. So, S character you have to see. Less S character means more bond length, okay. So, now if this one is sp3, it has less S character. So, it will have the highest bond length. So, we can eliminate option number B. Okay, fourth one will be higher. Now, if you see this one is, uh, now this one, this one is between, here resonance is there, okay. Due to resonance, this one is like neither a complete straw, single bond nor a complete double bond, right. So, it is in between that. So, it will come next. So, the next uh, option will be your <coughs> the next option will be your fourth after this one we will get benzene so we'll have four and three right so after this one will be your uh, double bond and then last will be your triple bond so one and two so the correct answer for this question is option number a next the bf bond distance in nh3 and bf3 is so here bf3 is there and here nh3 is there right now if you see here earlier bf3 has sp2 hybridization now, after this adduct is formed, this becomes sp3 hybridization, right? So, just now we have discussed the s character has decreased. Now, this is the s character in BF3. Now, as the s character has decreased, the bond length will increase. So, it will be longer than the BF3, okay? Correct answer is option number C. Now, next question. Solubility of NaCl, Na2SO4 and Na3PO4 in water in increasing order is, okay? So, if you remember... The solubility depends on the size, okay. Smaller the size, more is the solubility. So, first of all, NaCl is having the smaller size, anions are same, cations are same, anion is different. So, here we have SO4 2 minus and we have PO4 3 minus, right. And it also depends on the charge. So, since the size is very less for sodium chloride, that will be the more soluble one compared to Na3PO4 and then last is Na2SO4. You hear the size is bigger, here the size is small. So, that is why correct answer for this question is option number B. Okay, so then, so these were the top 30 questions from chemical bonding and molecular structure. This chapter is very small, less weighted. So, just revise the Vespers theory, molecular orbital theory and the bond order formulas. That will help you to solve some easy questions. So, if you have found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe our channel for more upcoming videos for your KZ preparation. Thank you and all the best for your exam.